you take us back to the beginning? How did you discover your passion for acting and music? Definitely. Uh, I mean, at least my passion for acting started <laughs> when I was like five years old, I think, uh, pretty early on. My, uh, you know, family always watched a lot of movies and I was very into like all the big, you know, blockbuster like Spider-Mans and the Star Wars and everything growing up. And, you know, I think as a kid, you're just like, oh, that'd be so cool to do that. Uh, and we lived in LA, my family and my older brother um, started acting before I did. And I kind of saw him do his first job and got to get that little peek behind the curtain, I guess. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing in the world. And yeah, I don't know, just getting to see it from an early age and uh, getting to see something that doesn't seem possible at an early age, uh, but still be like right there and tangible was pretty epic. And so I just, I started from, from then on and it's been a journey of what, uh, almost 20 years now from there to I guess where I'm at. But that passion was really early on. I think the music passion specifically, my family always had 80s music playing in the cars and you know, it, music was a big part of our family. But I think I started learning how to sing as just kind of a way to, I guess, round out my acting abilities because so many projects require you to be able to at least carry a tune. Um, and I was getting a lot of those auditions for like roles that could also sing. And I was like, I, you know, I should probably, probably do this. I mean, I sung as much as anyone does just for fun, but I think from probably, I don't know, preteens, it was kind of something that I more actively pursued and just learned as a way to round out my abilities. Um, and then kind of fell in love with it over time. I don't think early on, I thought it was something I could actually do as like a piece of a standalone career, but um, I just enjoyed doing it. When you look at your career as a whole, who or what's had the biggest influence either personally or professionally? I would say the biggest influence personally has definitely been just my family <laughs> and uh, the whole way through, you know, I think a lot of people start working in acting or music early on and, you know, if they find an extreme level of success, especially very early on at a young age, there's a lot of people that will come around them and kind of maybe steer them in not the best directions or just kind of take advantage of the moment that that person has and suddenly throw everything at them and their life can feel very mandated and not organic and natural. Um, and, and suddenly I think they kind of lose that childhood a little bit that makes you have those just down to earth, genuine friendships and family. And I think my family was so good about not letting that happen. Um, all of my like closest friends for most of my life have been people that did not work in entertainment. I've just known since I was a kid um, my family, I'm still super close with. And I think just having those kind of values instilled was always the biggest, the biggest piece because it's such a blessing to get to do what I do. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still something I enjoy doing, but it is, it's a career. It's, it's, it's part of the job. So for me, like outside of that, I like being very normal <laughs> and just, uh, you know, having a game night with my family or with friends, uh, me and my, me and my wife, Carol, we go to trivia nights almost every single Tuesday and it's like the best part of my week. I love it. Um, so I think, I think having that kind of like home base has been the biggest inspiration for me, uh, just in terms of like remembering what you do it for. Um, and in terms of like stylistic inspiration, I think growing up, uh, on the acting side, Hollywood blockbusters, uh, as a kid, I was just so enamored with like the, the Jurassic parks and the star Wars is, of the world. And I was like, I want to do that. That would be so freaking cool as, as anyone is. Um, and with music, I think I've always had such a wide range of musical interests because my parents, you know, when I was a kid growing up, it was like all eighties music, like journey or Def Leppard or Asia or foreigner, uh, or Michael Jackson, tons of Michael Jackson. Um, and then, got a little older and I kind of went through like the early 2000s like punk rock was like my I guess early teenage years so like the fallout boys like Liggett Park, My Chemical Romance like all that stuff mixed in um Justin Timberlake like the whole 2020 like suit and tie era was like right when I was like 15 16 so like that was a thing um so yeah I've had like a pretty big mixture I think of musical influences which is kind of awesome um and it's given me such an appreciation for a lot of different genres, which I really enjoy. I like bending different genres together. Yeah. And I think that definitely shows through what I do. You're speaking of success a little bit earlier. When you look back at your career, is there a moment that, that stands out to you? I think there's, there's, a, there's, there's a few moments for sure. Uh, one specifically, 
that stands out uh and it's an early one but i think it was the first time i realized i was a part of a project that was like big or was just like successful or would become some kind of cultural phenomenon that like people would just talk about like in a casual sense um and that was definitely adventure time <laughs> uh when i was like 13 i think we've been recording the show for like well over a year and the first season had like just came out uh and you know with animation at that time it wasn't like you're walking on the street and someone would know who you are from being a voice or something so like it had been out for a little while and i'd heard it was doing well but it was like okay cool you don't really know what that means and then we went to san diego comic-con and i remember we did this whole panel with the whole cast and we had this massive auditorium and they're like announcing people one by one i was so nervous i'd never done anything like this and i was like 13 i didn't know what to expect um and they introduced me and i went up on stage and i remember like a few thousand people were sitting in the audience and they had handed out like fin hats which is the hat that my character has and so this whole audience had like fin hats on and they were just like losing their minds when i walked on stage and i was like what the heck this is crazy like it's it's a, such a surreal thing to go through that type of experience where you don't even know i guess how well something's doing until you go to something like that and you realize like oh people really love this like this is a you know so much of it happens in a vacuum even with shooting something or acting uh, even now with social media like you can look at your followers and you can see like a big number or something but it's different getting to see something in person and seeing someone's actual like physical reaction to something um and I think that is like, those moments are always very surreal. You just dropped your debut album and you know, Vintage is this immersive experience that transports listeners to very specific eras. How did you come up with the concept behind this album? I think uh, it was kind of accidental at first. <laughs> um, I had done a little EP before this called Mad Love. And there's one song on there that I initially wanted to do is like kind of a Michael Buble um old style uh, uh kind of classic sinatra sounding song and i'd written it that way so the melody was very much that uh, and i intended up until the day before we recorded it to do it very like old style and the day before i was like eh, you know like maybe maybe it'd be cool to try something different and it was like i don't know i just got some weird whiff of inspiration i was probably listening to a panic at the disco song or something and i was like what if we do the vocals like an old song but then we do the production like a you know like a Death of the Bachelor, like a Billie Eilish type thing. And my producers were like, I have no idea what it's gonna sound like, but all right, let's try it, let's go for it. Like, and they got kind of like stoked about it. And we put this song together, which ended up being Uh-Oh. Um, and it was my favorite off of the whole like first five songs that I'd done. And I was just so excited by how that came together. And then off of that, I think a lot of fan response to that one was so good too, that it was like, oh, maybe I could do more of this kind of just with that same idea of taking um, some type of old style genre and mixing it with modern production and kind of bending two things together. Um, so that's where I think the sonic part of vintage came from was the blending of kind of old eras mixed with new production, which is really fun. And then when I knew that was the case, I ended up, I think just maybe coincidentally or intentionally in certain places, writing it lyrically to kind of have that in mind. I had the album title pretty early on. I was like, vintage sounds like a really cool title for going through different eras. Um, and then, and then lyrically, it just kind of blossomed from there and took on a life of its own. And it ended up starting as, you know, just going through this journey of different musical eras. But then I was like, what if, uh, at the same time of doing that, there's one specific through line story that's also happening at the same time. So the lyrical through line is, you know, someone who's kind of caught in modern relationships and modern dating, uh, and kind of goes through the ups and downs of that and then finds a vintage relationship in a modern world, essentially. And so each song works by itself, but I really was yeah. enjoying trying to write it as like one piece of like one long story, which is really hard. But when you have the time and you can like kind of tweak stuff, it was pretty fun to look at it in that context. In many ways, this album showcases a different side to your artistry and what fans have come to expect from you. Were there any nerves kind of venturing into this uh, new chapter in your career? Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. Because I think when you have any type of audience or following, people are so supportive and I love that. My fans are awesome, but it doesn't necessarily mean that what they're fans of at this moment is gonna transition to what you're doing next, especially if it's a big jump from like acting to music. You know, uh, it doesn't always traditionally work that well. And so it's kind of nerve wracking, dipping your toes in a different creative water, uh, so to speak, because, 
in some ways in my mind, it's like you almost have one chance to get it right. Because if you try it and it doesn't work, anything, even if you, you know, learn and get better and grow as everyone does, um, people are always going to assume that whatever you're doing after the fact is going to be similar to whatever that first thing was. And so, you know, I think I probably wouldn't have done this album or even done any more music if the first single I did, which was just a, you know, a special song that I made for my wife's birthday, uh, <laughs> which is a very chill, like acoustic song. Um, the response to that just musically overall was like so ridiculously great that it kind of gave me that confidence to do more. It was almost like in a weird way, not that I need this, but kind of the fans being like, yes, we would like you to do more of that. Like, here's our approval. And then I think having that type of response gives you the confidence to do more because ultimately when you make something in a vacuum, you really don't know <laughs> what it's going to turn out to be, I guess. And so you kind of need that feedback, I think, to give that confidence. And it doesn't mean that you were like perfect when you first started, but it just means that like enough of it was good and you have enough of a knack for it to want to continue doing it. And you have like a support team that's there the whole way with you, which I think is really, um, is really fun. But you know what? Uh, the part about being a solo artist is like, if it's great or if it's horrible, it's all on you. <laughs> like <laughs> I write it, I perform it. There's no one else to like put blame on, you know, it's like, if it's awesome, great. I get like all that credit. If it's horrible, it's like, I take all the blame, uh, which is equally scary and equally exciting. Um, but yeah, I think ironically, I've had great uh, response from fans, which is so, so nice to see. But my favorite part of the process is not like, releasing it and all of that like i almost want to crawl under a rock when that happens but mm -hmm. my favorite part is generally being in the studio and just and just making the music you know when, when no one else is listening and it's just kind of like you're messing around and it doesn't really matter if you're mixing something bad or good it's just you're having fun with it that's my favorite part of the process if you had to pick a song off vintage that best encompasses who you are as a solo artist which would it be and why mm -hmm. wow that's a good question uh <laughs> especially considering they're so all over the place in terms of the sound uh I guess the song that probably encompasses me as an artist, granted off the top of my head, this might change like a million times this week. Uh, but right now I would say, hmm, I feel like, I feel like Dancing with Strangers is definitely one of those. Um, I think it had a good blend of like, I like songs that are upbeat and, and obviously are catchy and are fun to listen to and they're, definitely a bop um but have lyrics in a storyline that is still accessible and is still easy to sing along to and not hard to understand um but has a good amount of deeper meaning i think in like verses and pre-choruses um and and has just levels to it you know i think that's like it's fun songwriting is is exciting because there's a balance of making it accessible and, and makes sense and, and simple so that anyone can like listen to it and figure it out in two seconds but having certain parts to at least have you know double meanings and, and, and deeper levels to it and i think that song for me i'm excited by it and just it came out great in that way and i'm very excited by uh by that i, I guess yeah i guess right now i would probably say dancing with strangers um it's it's honest and genuine to either experiences i've had or experiences from like close friends and people that i've seen have and so it's kind of it's fictionalized because of that but it's you know, it's based off of real things, which is great. Um, and there's a good message there. Uh, but it still feels like it's genuine to me uh, as well. Like, I don't feel weird singing that because it's like, oh, yeah, like part of my story is still in there, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so I guess, I guess, long story short, probably Dancing with Strangers. Again, that answer will probably change because I have no idea what I'm, uh, what I'm doing next. Uh, and there's a lot of different genres on that album, but I guess that one. Actor musicians have often said that there's a different level of vulnerability that you need to tap into when you're releasing your own music. Did you feel similarly throughout this mm -hmm. process? Yes, I think it's it's also interesting. Different artists approach songwriting differently, definitely. Um, for me, there's certain songs that are specifically about someone, and if it's if it's you know going to be specifically about either my wife or or a very specific relationship or experience that I've had those ones I generally try to keep as accurate to whatever the experience is, is possible. Um, and that has its own challenge because sometimes maybe you get inspired by something that was personal, but um, when you're writing it, something just comes up that is really cool. Uh, and it's not really true to what the experience was, but it's like a really interesting storyline in my head. Um, 
and I'll go with that. So I think a lot of songs that I do, whether they start from something that's genuine, I give them the freedom to kind of take on a life of their own. Um, and I, I kind of prefer fictionalizing uh, um, a lot of songs just because, you know, if something's about someone in particular, I hate putting people on blast. <laughs> if it's a song that's about my wife, like that needs to be genuine and that'll be very obvious, you know, if it's, a, if it's, if it's that relationship, uh, I keep that one as genuine and sweet as possible um, and honest. But yeah, if there's something that was inspired by someone I knew, I, I generally try and fictionalize it a little bit because I like giving people their privacy, you know? <laughs> I don't like I don't like throwing someone under the bus or or making something seem one-sided, you know? There's there's always levels to everything. And so I like to fictionalize things because you take that real inspiration and the genuine nature that it, it started that songwriting process, but you let it become its own story. Um, and I think that's just writing in general. I really like being able to let the song kind of take me where it wants to go at times um, when I'm writing it and not feel like I 100% need to stick with whatever actually happened because I think that's the beauty in art is that it's like an interpretation of something and it's mm -hmm. kind of either glamorizing or making something so much more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess epic maybe than, than, it, than it was or just, uh, you know, it's, it's fictionalizing it. And I think that's really fun. It adds layers of drama. Um, and that's what I enjoy in songwriting. I don't like being so stuck to maybe what actually happened where you can't add some layers and add some colors to it. You've paired a, a lot of these songs with these visual uh, music videos. Mm -hmm. As you're writing these tracks, are you thinking of the visual components at the same time? What is that process like? I think whenever I hear a song, I think in my head I have, I'm sure you do too. I think most people like whenever I hear a song, even if I've not seen a music video for it or anything, like I have a picture of what that song makes me think of, I guess. And there's like this, like almost music video internal dialogue in my head that I kind of hear when I'm hearing a song or maybe it's like a color for whatever reason, this song is like, Oh, this is like red and gray. I don't know. Um, and so I think there's definitely that when I'm making the music and then a lot of times, that transitions into whatever the the video ends up being um at least on like a color spectrum or like kind of what i envision in my head uh the part that always changes is like i have this maybe much grander idea for something and then i'm like okay well what can we actually do ourselves with the budget that we have <laughs> and then you tone it back and you make it work um but those are definitely in there for sure i think like this feels right for instance i remember making that song and i was like oh this is a very colorful fun kind of 70s ode to you know the the kind of jackson five type era uh and i was like what can i do for this video uh what's like a timeless happy fun location i was like disney world <laughs> so i was like disney world is very colorful it's very fun it's very bright vibrant it's been there for a long time it feels timeless uh so that just worked it was so random i don't know why that is what popped into my head but i was just like oh i picture us like running around and having fun somewhere with this song and like that's such a, a happy uh kind of a happy go lucky place with dancing with strangers i initially wanted something that was nighttime which it ended up being very dark and kind of nighttime-esque for sure so that stuck i wanted like dark colors with kind of some more like neon-esque lights kind of playing off of and that definitely is in the uh, finished music video which is fun i i always had that in my head um, initially I had probably a more like grand idea for the video, but I was like, that's going to take too long. Don't have the budget. Can't do that. So, you know, then the, the filmmaker side of it comes in and you go, okay, well, how can I still make this interesting, but not have like 10 different locations and like 50 extras. Cause that's like impossible to do right now. Uh, you know, how can I basically do it just me by myself? And so the, the cinematographer we work with Bernardo is awesome. And we kind of put that together, uh, and it made it feel like the vibe of the song without needing like a billion people around. So yeah, I, I always, I always visualize those early on and have an idea for it. Um, and to me, it comes through. It might not seem like these, it's the exact appropriate idea for people who just hear the song. They're like, that's the video you did. Um, but it makes sense in my brain at least. Oh, definitely. And with this being your debut uh, solo album, did anything surprise you about the process, putting it together? What was the biggest takeaway? Oof, I would say just the amount of content that you have to like put together. I guess you don't have to, but for us, it was enjoyable to put together a bunch of content. Like we made different canvases for every single song on Spotify that were like unique to each one, which is fun. It's like, it's another way to 
even if you can't do a music video for every song, like have some type of visual that kind of goes with it and gets the, the mood across. Um, so that was fun, but that's a lot of work. Like we are trying to do, I think we've done music videos for four songs now, is it four? Four songs now, lyric video for another one. Um, we have, I think, one more music video that's unreleased um, that'll come out later uh, to to be to be announced. Uh, but yeah, like the amount of work that it is just putting that together, and as an independent artist, especially, um, you know, you're trying to keep your costs down because everything is paid out of pocket, and so you're trying to do as much yourself as possible, which is great in the end. And like, I have a huge sigh of relief right now. Uh, but during it, it is very stressful. Like, you know, I'm doing everything to the distribution end, just myself, making sure it's all synced up, making sure like the singles and the album ISRCs match up, uh, you know, like making sure the release date is correct, double checking about a million times, uh, and going through all that and doing all the YouTube stuff, making sure the premieres come out right, putting together content for like the release. It's just, it's a ton. Like, uh, we're a <laughs> we're a very small operation, but we we have a good output, I guess, which is pretty great. It's just it's a lot of work, you know. And I think yeah. at the end of it, it's it's nice when people enjoy it because there's so much that goes into it from start to finish. I mean, it's days upon days upon days upon days of work. Even with the music videos, we have you know our Bernardo has been shooting most of them, um, but we we edit it ourselves. I've been editing them myself, putting it together, which is a ton. Takes a couple of days at least for you know per video. Um, and it's really just it's a labor of love <laughs> it's it's a passion project and i love it so much and i love getting to have the creative control to to be involved that thoroughly so like what is put out there is like my vision it's not really tampered with because i get the final say as an independent artist which is awesome yeah. it just means that you have to put a lot more work into it um and i think that comes through and i, I uh i'm very appreciative of the response from people because you know it's a lot of work but that's what you do for something you're very passionate about as the world begins to open up, is there a potential for a tour in the future? I would absolutely love to tour in the future. Um, it's something that we've talked about. Uh, there's no specific plans right now. We're just like trying to get the album released and like worry about that. Uh, but yeah, if it's if it's something we can work out um, and you know uh, financially make it feasible and do it in a way that is uh, you know makes sense, I guess, then we would absolutely love to. I, I would love to. I think, you know, if the fan response is good enough and people really have an appetite for that, I would absolutely love to, to tour. I did, uh, literally last night was the first time I've performed any of my stuff live at all. We just did like a, a Instagram live um, leading up to the Pretty Little Lies music video premiere. Uh, and I performed Gentlemen uh, acoustically. And that was the first time I performed any of my stuff live for fans. I was so nervous, uh, but it turned out really great, and I was I was very excited about it. It's it's such a it's such an interesting feeling performing something live because I get so nervous before, and then like once you start, you're just like, all right, let's just do what we rehearsed basically, and you're and you're having fun with it. Um, I think that feeling is nerve wracking, but also rewarding at the end. Like it's it's so uh, anxious like up until the performance, but then like once you perform and after the performance, especially, it's like, woo, we did it. Uh, and it feels feels really good. Um, so I think that's in the cards for the future, for sure. Uh, that would be the goal eventually. Uh, just depends on if <laughs> we can scheduling wise, make that work. It's the hard part of also doing acting and music is like, yeah. I could book a movie and be completely off the books for like four months, you know, and not have any time to do anything else. So you're trying to like make all that work. I think that's the biggest, uh, roadblock in terms of doing shows is just, you know, trying to schedule around the shooting schedule. <clears throat> yeah, and speaking of the acting side of your craft, Julia Phantoms recently celebrated its one year anniversary on Netflix. Yeah. Have there been any the Phantom Versary? <laughs> when are we going to get a season two? Uh, I can't say officially. Uh, I do not know. I have not been told. Um, but I'm I'm hoping. I mean, we're all we're all ready to go back. We're all waiting for the call. Uh, if they if they pick it up and, and greenline it, we are we are there. Um, I love that cast and crew so much. I mean, Kenny Ortega is just an absolute legend and he's just the sweetest man in the world. He's like my grandpa. Uh, I love him. <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a kid at heart though. I say grandpa out of respect, Kenny. I love Kenny. Uh, but no, like I, it's just such a blast to work with those people, you know? And I think getting to mix music and acting in one project is, is rare. 
um, on that level. And it's just quality. I think it's such a uplifting show and I really enjoy the entire cast and crew so much. Um, so here's hoping knock on, knock on this wood. It's probably fake wood, but knock on wood. Uh, hopefully we'll be going back maybe next year. I don't know. I mean, if, if it happens, I feel like it would have to be soon because it's been, it's been a minute since the first season came out and, you know, you yeah. want to like capitalize off of that momentum. Otherwise, uh, you know, waiting like two years or three years in between seasons is the worst. So, uh, you know, as long as the fans just keep harassing Netflix, hopefully they'll <laughs> say yes eventually. <laughs> yeah, if we do get a season two and you get the opportunity to pitch a song off Vintage for Reggie, which would it be and why? Ooh, great question. Um, which song off of Vintage would I pitch for Reggie? Uh, probably... I think, anyway, dang it, I don't even know. Um, I feel like Talking to a Memory uh, is appropriate. It's the last song on the album. Ironically, it's the only song that has a co-write on it. Um, and I wrote that song with Charlie, uh, Charlie Gillespie, who plays Luke uh, from Phantoms. Yeah. He wrote that with me. We actually, we actually wrote that um, during the summer of quarantine. Uh, and at the time, it was something that we were just like kind of playing around with. Like we didn't know if we we're going to get picked up quickly or not for a potential season two. And so we kind of wrote that as almost, we started writing it at least. It changed a lot when I wanted to use it for vintage. But uh, mm -hmm. we started writing it as almost like a potential like Luke Julie type song for a potential season two or something. And then like once it was just taking forever and we didn't know what was happening, I was like, that song's too good. I'm going to use it for myself. <laughs> and so... Yeah, and so I, I took that, and then it was always, you know, because of that, kind of written to be a, a duet with, like, a duet in mind. And so I had my friend Megan Nicole, who's extremely talented, um, do the lady part of the song. Um, and, yeah, I guess I would say that one. It's It feels appropriate to Phantoms. Yeah. It definitely has that kind of feel to it. Um, and just a great song. Really proud of that one. So Talking to a Memory featuring Megan Nicole. That's my answer. That's a great story. Uh, and then we, we like to end all of our interviews with a pop culture speed round. Because you're an actor musician, we have two sets of questions. Which one do you want to do? The actor one or the musician one? Oh, shoot. Uh, speed round, acting and music. Well, we're talking about the albums. Let's do music. What the heck? Why not? Right. Uh, is there a, a band or artist that fans would be surprised to learn is on your playlist? <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, they would probably be surprised that uh, Hannah Montana is is on my playlist. And that's uh, it's probably due to my wife, Carolyn. Not probably. It's definitely due to Carolyn. But uh, you know what? Nobody's perfect. It's a freaking bop. And uh, <laughs> wear that in the car all the time. Uh, what about the <laughs> first album you ever bought? Oh, my gosh. First album I ever bought, at least that I can remember, would have been... Gosh, I don't even know. Um, maybe Minutes to Midnight by Linkin Park? Possibly? E it's either that or uh, or Welcome to the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. I can't remember which one was first. Um, but I do know I actually bought both of those. Again, that was in my, uh, that was in my like 12 to 14, like I love pop punk years. Uh, so yeah, it's probably either Black Parade or Minutes to Midnight. How about the first concert you ever attended? The first concert I ever attended was actually a Journey concert. Uh, oh. Again, parents love 80s music. <laughs> uh, I think it was Journey and Heart and Cheap Trick were opening. Um, I, and it was, uh, I think, oh, it's still there. Yeah, but it's still their current singer. Arnell Pinedo was uh, singing. Um, but that was like right after he just became their new lead singer. Um, so that was the first concert I've ever been to, technically, the Journey. Uh, what about an album that changed your life and why? Album that changed my life and why? Uh, good question. Um, I think, oh, geez, I don't even know. Um, possibly the first 1975 album, which I think is just self-titled. Yeah. Um, it was just such a, it was in my teenage years. And I remember like it came out and, I don't know, just at the time, it didn't feel like it was this massive band that was like super well known, but it just had such a, I don't know, there's like this kind of uplifting 
teenage feel to it that just like it felt like it encapsulated uh the feelings or just the mood of kind of that fun teenage years where you're figuring it out um and you have this like you know friend group that's just kind of like all over the place um but <laughs> there's just like lots of drama but it's also like kind of funny looking back um yeah i don't know i think that one was like it's one of my favorite albums ever uh and yeah i think sound wise it also just influenced a lot of music that i love now still um since then it's been definitely like a sound that based off of a lot of classic music but it was still kind of its own thing um and i think there's there's definitely influences of that even in my music too so probably probably the first self-titled 1975 album what about a venue that's on your bucket list to perform at Shoot, venue on my bucket list to perform at. Uh, oh gosh, I don't even. I mean, what's the what's the cool one in New York, Carolyn? Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden. Mm. I don't know why I blanked on the name. That would just be super epic. Um, yeah, I think that <laughs> that's a bucket list. I don't think that'll ever happen. But hey, knock on wood. Who knows? Uh, that would just be super super cool. I like yeah. That's that's a bucket list venue for sure. All right, and then final question for you. When you're on the road, what's a must have? On the road, what's a must have? Mm, my puppies, my dogs, they gotta come with me. You know, after a long day of work, best thing is just a, a cute little cute little dude to come snuggle up with, you know, it's the best. <laughs> yeah. You well, know, even when it's been a bad day, your pups just like, they just brighten it up. You know, they're always happy to see you. you they're, they're the most supportive, supportive people in the world.